Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. Today is part two of the wide body kit creation stuff. We're continuing our march off into the deep end, not knowing exactly what we're doing, but uh, it's been going great so far. So now we're gonna start uh, infusing some of our cloth with resin, laying carbon fiber, and building the second one. Should be fun, stay tuned. Before we get down to work today, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by the mobile game Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is already a mega hit blockbuster game with over 10 million players. It'll take you to a world of real, dark fantasy and realism. For those of you guys that don't know, Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new collection RPG game. You can collect over 400 champions. You can gather orcs, elves, undead, knights, and more. You can explore over a million different champion builds. I really love the versatility to this game and discover 13 really cool different locations. And the best part is, it's free to play. Check out these different champions. The details are really amazing. You can see the good graphics and the textures on the different armors. And what I love about this game is everybody can find something to do for themselves. Some people like collecting characters. Some are all about the deep storyline and the graphics. I'm personally down for the combat. I like the PvP aspect of the game. And personally, I really like the game, but you don't have to take my word for it. With over 200,000 different reviews, Raid has almost a perfect score on the Play Store. This game is growing super fast and they actually have really huge plans for the game over the next six months. So there's infinite content for you to enjoy and no time to get bored. So what are you guys waiting for? You got nothing to lose. It's free to play. Guys, the link's in the description below. If you go click my link in the description below, you're going to get started with 50,000 free silver and a free epic champion to get you started faster as part of the new player program. Huge thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get down to work. Getting started, I unfortunately got to I gotta undo some of this awesome fabric uh, stuff. Uh, we didn't build enough supports in here to have this thing be like, this car is supposed to go really, really fast, right? We don't have enough supports. All we have is here, up here, and a couple in there, which doesn't leave much for down here. Although when it's fabric, it's really cool to have a variable width body kit. Uh, that can't stay that way. So we need to uh, build some supports into the quarter panel and some other spots. And to do that, we got to pull the fabric back. So undoing the fabric, build a couple supports, hopefully it'll be gently placed back where it came from without too much hassle. I've got my supports in here now. This goes into a nice little plate that goes across here that has some bolts that go through it. So now it's time to uh, go ahead and it, it looks like it's gonna glue back down just fine. I've been trying to dry out this corner. We got a little truly on it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this thing back down and then we can start prepping to uh, impregnate this beast with resin. All right, we're back in order. Everything came back together okay, and now we have a nice wheel gap without anything under there. Look at the, look at the magic. This is very technically difficult to mount because of how it's got an open back and an open front. We don't really want people to see the stuff, but it came out pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and do a resin infusion on all of the edges. What that'll do is that's gonna take the cloth and really, really stick it to the metal underneath it. And I think that's gonna be a good way to get started. So Kyle and I are gonna work our way basically around the frame very carefully, just trying to get the edge where the metal meets the fabric. All 
All right, last night we came in and laid resin along all the metal parts and uh, and just all around all the edges, and it actually really did a great job of really firming up the fabric where it soaked through, where it got infused with resin, made it a lot more firm. So it's, it's still flexy in here, but once you get up here, it's a lot more firm, and it's gonna be able to hold the weight of the fabric that we put on it next. So now we're gonna grab a bigger brush and just kind of come along here and, uh, you know, infuse the whole thing with resin. Well, we got a bunch of resin on our cloth. Unfortunately, it did start to sag a little bit more than we wanted to, and it got some weird wrinkly stuff in here. It seems like once this stuff gets wet, it kind of loses its elasticity a little bit, um, and it's not really looking the way we, it's definitely not looking the way we wanted it to. Um, so we got a game plan though. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry up overnight, um, and then once it's hardened up, we're gonna see how hard it dried, see if it's really gonna work for us as kind of a base, and then test what happens when we lay carbon fiber over it, if it looks the way we want it to. If not, the good thing about about this is we the skeleton's still there we still have our skeleton so we can really easily just rip all this fabric off of here and then uh, get some fabric that's maybe a little bit stronger a little bit more stiff and do the thing over again so uh, yeah no worries really we're just gonna let it dry and see how it does while that's going on I've got started on our second one so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera on to time-lapse and bust out a lot of this stuff to build our second skeleton Quick update, so we're making some progress over there. Kyle just busted out another piece and we got the frame started. You can kind of see that right there. Now we took the fabric off of here because uh, it was sagging, We it, it was kind of going in a bad direction. And while it was still wet, I kind of made the decision to pull it off because a viewer, shout out to Ben, actually left a really nice comment about this uh, material. It's called like, I want. I think it's called Cessonite, uh, and it's, uh, it's C-E-C-O-N-I-T-E. -E. And it's a fabric that you can buy and they use it for airplanes and they you can drape it over stuff you glue it down and then you hit it with a hot glue gun and it tenses up really really it shrinks back and gets really 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 strong uh, so that sounds like exactly what we need for this type of project so i figured you know what let's pull the fabric off while it's still wet so it's going to be less of a problem and uh, we can try and do this with the right types of materials that we need so this <laughs> dried up overnight and uh it would have worked it's like it's hard hard now so it, it would have worked if we probably did uh, just a little bit lighter coats if we went really light on it it probably would have worked just fine but i'm really excited about the cessonite stuff so we got to give us some time to come in the mail but i think it's going to be exactly what we need for this so that's pretty cool so we're going to go ahead and continue now on building this frame that way we can get this thing busted out and ready so when we have the cessonite we can do both sides at once and then we can just probably lay carbon right over that Okay, we got the second connecting piece building our vent. So the next piece I wanna build is this piece that'll match up with this piece that I also built. But we need to have this sitting on the wheel and also have this wheel spaced four inches out. Just a reminder, we're not actually running the wheel spacers. This is to emulate the offset of the correct wheel that we're having built right now. So we're gonna go ahead and lift the car up, pop this wheel off, put four inches of spacer on, push this out, check the alignment, make sure it's straight. And then I'm gonna put the same one inch gaps underneath this on our tire. And then we'll go ahead and weld this frame into that and then build our connecting piece from there down to there.
Last night we wrapped up the skeleton frame for this other side, but we still gotta do some finishing work. I gotta fill in some of the welds here and do the rest of the sanding, and then we will be ready to pull our new fabric over it. I just got it this morning. I'm really excited to work with it. So let's get this side finished up, and then we can start running our fabric. The skeleton is wrapped up and ready to be well, wrapped in fabric. While that was going on, the guys from Truly came by <laughs> to drop off a little care package. Oh, they noticed that our fridge was, uh, fridge was a little low and I had mentioned on the channel how much we like Truly and they came by. Huge thanks to the guys at Truly. This is so awesome. Our favorite flavors are the berry and the tropical. So they just hooked us up with a ton of this. So hopefully this will last us. This should probably last us until the build's over. But if not, you know, guys, it truly just keep a lookout for my email. Uh, thanks so much. So that's really, really cool, guys. I'll put a link to their website in the description. Um, so our, our shipment of crazy airspace um, fabric has come in. This stuff's called Sessonite. They use it on airplanes and lots of other applications. It's a really tough fabric and um, it's kind of not stretchy right now, but the idea is that you can lay it over something, glue it down, and then hit it with a heat gun, and it will uh, it shrinks. So it'll take up the wrinkles or the other stuff like that. So it can it, it can look kind of ugly, and then you hit it with the heat gun, and it'll kind of shrink back and get nice and tight on the skeleton. So that's what we're really hoping for. Um, I've heard really really great things about this. Thanks to Ben. Uh, shout out to Ben who told us about this. So the first thing we got to do is we were using hot glue, and we so we just got to do a test. So we got the hot glue gun heating up. We're gonna go ahead and just test in a corner here and see how well hot glue can hold on to this fabric, and if it does well. If not, we're going to have to use some of their uh, kind of aircraft cement stuff. All right, so far the Sessonite stuff was a real big success. Well, I mean, it's just any type of fabric, but we were able to stretch it on here and glue it on without any trouble. So you can see we got some wavies here, and that's the stuff that we should be able to heat gun right out. But we really don't have that many. We got some natural kind of creases in the fabric. That's no big deal. And a little bit of stuff back down here, but really, I mean, we pretty much could start laying carbon fiber over this right now if we wanted to, but we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a heat gun after we go ahead and do the other side. So Kyle's gonna go ahead and wrap the other side in some of this crazy aircraft fabric. Okay, Kyle just wrapped up the uh, Sessonite fabric. I hope that's how you pronounce it anyways, on this side. So now we're gonna bust out the heat gun and we're gonna try and shrink some of this stuff back. I think the biggest worry here is that the hot glue is only so strong. And from what I've heard, this fabric is super, super, super strong. So there is a little bit of a danger of us um, having it pull back so hard that it rips itself off the skeleton. But hopefully that won't happen and we'll get a nice pretty stretch back thing and we'll be ready for carbon fiber. This stuff is freaking magic. I know I've said this already, but huge thanks to the viewer, Ben, who let me know about this stuff. Guys, I do read comments. I do take your advice. This was clutch. This was so cool. Uh, if you ever have a job that needs something like this, I highly recommend. This stuff has really good shrink back. It's nice and strong feeling. I got a little bit, I'm gonna take a little bit more out of this. I think once it cools down, it kind of eases back up. But uh, it's still nice and strong feeling, and it's gonna be able to support our resin 100%. And uh, it's since it's see-through, it's a lot harder to catch the edges of it. You can't really see the shape of it very well. And once we put resin on there, it's gonna get even more see-through. But this worked extremely well, extremely, extremely well. So I'm very, very happy that we took the time, ordered the right stuff, and got it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up that one section one more time and then we're gonna infuse both of these sides with resin. All 
All right, guys, well, the resin infusion process is done and we have given it time to dry up. So you can see it's it's an interesting uh, look to it. It's, it's nice that it's it's glossy now because you can kind of see the shape of it. Uh, it the, the material itself is a little bit hydrophobic. It didn't, it like did a little bit of beating up and stuff like that, which is no problem at all. And now that it's dried, it's kind of got like a plastic texture. It's almost like we wrapped this in like a really heavy duty plastic. Very, very strong bond all around the edges, which is super good for what we're trying to do. So that was really cool. It worked out pretty well. Um, um, on the other side, it's a little bit more smooth, but it's, it's the same thing. I love the look of this. I think the angles are coming out really good. So the next thing that we're going to do is carbon fiber. So Kyle and I, we're going to use a little bit of uh, spray adhesive to make sure that we have some tack on this. And then we're going to go ahead and lay and cut out our carbon fiber. And on this layer of carbon fiber, we're just going to the edge here. We're not trying to wrap around it all. Uh, so we're just going to lay it over the face of it and then trim it on all our edges. We got our carbon wrapped over our panel so that using that adhesive really made it stick and follow the lines really well. So pretty confident that when we apply the resin here, it's all gonna stay in the spot where we want it. Uh, so this is looking really good. And the game plan is, is that we wanna just apply resin and hopefully it'll make the panel strong enough that we'll be able to pop it off of the car after just one layer of carbon fiber. If not, we're gonna add another layer, but we're trying to get away with just one. So the next step is Kyle and I are going to go ahead and brush on our resin and infuse this carbon fiber with resin. Uh, the resin we're gonna be using is this fiberglass 2000 you guys know fiberglass is a sponsor for this build they've been hooking us up with all of the carbon fiber and the resin and all the molding stuff that we've done and all that stuff so huge thanks to them uh and because man this stuff is expensive so huge thanks to them for helping us out uh let's go ahead and get that stuff mixed up and on the panel All right, guys, it's the next day and our carbon fiber has dried up. This this worked really, really well. So now we got a nice, harder surface for sure. It's got a lot of structure to it. It's feeling really, really strong already. So this is great. I'm comfortable with now pulling these off of the car. The worry was we don't wanna pull them off and have them lose their shape. So Kyle and I are gonna go ahead and pull these off the car and get them set up on a table and prepared for their reinforcements. We got our pieces off. I'm so, I'm so, I'm just so happy with the way that this process has been going, man. This is really, really cool. And uh, I'm just really happy with how symmetrical they are and how they look and the shape of them and everything. It's, it's really cool. This has been a really cool process. So uh, the next thing we got to do is like these edges are like oh, sharp razor blade saws. The carbon fiber, once it gets resin in there is real tough. So we're going to go ahead and sand down the edges all the way around. And then we're going to be removing any of the excess cloth and the excess, um, that hot glue that's in there. We got to get all that off too. make sure we got a nice clean round edge here. Okay, we got our edges cleaned up. It looks really, really good. Um, with all the edges kind of nicely trimmed up and everything, it's, it's looking really, really cool. I'm really, really excited about this. So um, the next thing we're gonna do is a layer of reinforcement. And this is mainly reinforcement to reinforce to the bars and to do a little bit of buildup by the bars. So what we've got here is some chop strand uh, matte tape, basically is what they call it. And it's nice because it's got some nice sharp edges on it, hard edges that we can butt up against our pieces of metal. So you can see like I've tested one there and we're probably gonna overlap. I wanna do a little bit more buildup. 
I'm not sure if I want to do one or two, uh, but all around the bars here. Um, and then all these bars are going to get overlapped as well. So I just want all the bars uh, being completely covered in fiberglass reinforcement all the way around. And then we'll get ready to infuse them with resin. All right, reinforcements went really well. We took advantage of this abnormally hot Oregon day and just set them outside and they're pretty much dried up. Well, they're, they're stiffened up a lot. Uh, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we wanna put a layer of carbon fiber on the inside here. So a whole layer of carbon fiber on the inside, everything inside of the rails, inside of the metal, inside of the rails, covering this whole area in carbon fiber. And then that'll prepare us for our final layer of carbon fiber on the outside. As long as it makes everything stiff enough, we think it will. So we're gonna go ahead and just use all our scraps because this stuff will never be seen. So we're just gonna grab all, we have tons and tons of scraps from all the door pieces and, and making these pieces and stuff like that. So that's probably the most economical way. We're just gonna lay in a bunch of layers of scraps all through here. We got our scrap carbon on the inside. Now it looks a little goofy, but trust me, once I clean this up, it'll look just fine. Uh, once we clean up the edges and everything else like that, we did a little reinforcement around the metal stuff to give it a little bit more strength and got a nice clean coat over that. It's either one or some, in some places, two layers thick. Hey guys, I got some news to tell you. All right guys, I got a little SEMA news for you. This is kind of a good news, bad news type of situation. So you guys know that we're planning on having this car on display at SEMA in the Motul booth. Motul is a partner of ours on this build. Um, and uh, what happened was, is we're, we're still going to SEMA. Um, what happened was is uh, Kevin Hart really wanted to bring his Barracuda to SEMA. <clears throat> Motul works with Kevin Hart and his car and the guys that make his car. And uh, so they, they, uh, they were getting in a weird two car in the booth type of situation. At the same time, um, Garrett, their car that they had planned to go to the booth kind of didn't really come through. So Garrett had an opening and Motul kind of had one extra car situation. Um, so I asked Motul, I said, you know, what do you guys think if I uh, go over to the Garrett booth and then you guys can have Kevin Hart's uh, vehicle in your booth? That worked out just fine. Um, and so that's, that's what's happening. I'm in the Garrett booth. And then the unfortunate thing is after we finalized that decision, I, I told Garrett, yes, I'm gonna be, Garrett, you know, the turbocharger sponsor. I told them, yes, we're gonna be in your booth. We got that all set up. Uh, unfortunately, Kevin Hart crashed his car like three days after that, completely totaled the thing. So it will not be at SEMA. Luckily, he's okay. Um, that's, a, that's a weird situation. So uh, Motul will have another car now. They have a backup car um, and, and I will be in the Garrett booth. So there's a little bit of a flip-flop or just a flip actually trying to be courteous and make some space for a celebrity. Um, and then unfortunately he deleted his car. So that happens. So that's it. There's no drama between myself and Motul or anything like that. We're still gonna be running Motul products on this car. Um, we just jumped over to the Garrett booth where we will be on display at SEMA for you guys to all see. So that's the game plan. All right, and with that news, that's the end of this episode. We are getting really, in the next episode that we do on the wide body over fenders, we will finish those things up. There's a lot of sanding and a lot of resin left to do, but um, I can tell you already, they're gonna work. So I'm really excited on that. And we'll, we'll finish them. Make sure you hit subscribe so you see that last episode of those when it comes through. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Peace.